the... Hello everyone. Today we're doing front brake pads on a 2010 Ford Edge. And you can see we've removed the front wheel. We have it up on jack. And this was a 19 millimeter socket to remove the lug nuts. And this one had some aftermarket lug nuts on them that didn't have the trim cap on them. You can see there's just open standard old style lug nuts. And I would not recommend ever using these on these newer cars without hubcaps just through a rim like that because they just don't keep the dirt and rust and corrosion out. It was a pain getting those off. It took me two hours to get those lug nuts off using a big half inch drive impact, a torch, and PB blaster just going back and forth, heating and spraying, heating and spraying, and hitting it with the wrench. I tried using the tire iron that came with it and actually bent that. All right, the next step, once we get the tire out of the way, is to remove the 17 millimeter slider bolts on the top and bottom for the caliper. And those weren't too bad to get loose. Once you break them loose, they're pretty much finger tight. And once we slide those off, well, get yeah, unthreaded all the way, of course, unthreaded all the way. As you can see, we removed the two 17 millimeter slider bolts and they're pretty well lubricated and looking pretty good. Once those are out, we'll just be able to grab a hold of the rotor or caliper and we'll be able to get it either, either lift up and slide out from the bottom or you push down and slide out from the top. There you go, slide out from the top on this one. And that is a dual piston caliper, so that'll be no problem, but we'll have to compress both pistons in it for it to get back together. Let's have a look. I know one side's really wore down badly, but this side doesn't seem to be quite as bad. When you're compressing the caliper, since it's a dual piston system, it's good to use a brake caliper compression tool. But if you don't have one, you can flip one of the old brake pads around backwards so that the steel plate is pressing against the pistons and use that to compress both at once. That way you don't have to go back and forth pushing one then the other over and over again. Another interesting thing I just discovered on these vehicles, which I've never done one on a Ford Edge before, but you have two different sizes of caliper slide pin bolts. You have a larger diameter one here that's on the bottom and a skinnier shorter one on top. But actually I got those reversed because when you're putting it back together, the larger diameter one Let's flip them around. There we go. The larger diameter and slightly longer one goes on top. And the smaller diameter, shorter one goes on the bottom. So let's go clean these up and lube these. And we've got the piston compressed. We'll install the new brake pads and we'll be ready to go. And I see what the problem was on this. The um, Looks like someone recently did the brakes on it. And when they put the caliper back on, they twisted it. And there was like a little circle right up near the uh, stabilizer thing here. You could tell there's like a kink, almost a 90 degree kink in the brake hose. So I'm hoping when we get it all back together, that won't be an issue, that it'll straighten itself out and be okay. But there's a chance if it doesn't release properly and starts hanging up, we'll have to replace that brake hose. We shall see. While we're getting ready to put the wheel back on, I got one more thing I want to talk to you about. And that is sticking calipers on Ford Motor Company products. And really any kind of vehicle. This will be true for, but they seem to be quite common on recent Ford products. And as I told you, this, when whoever put this on last, looped the caliper around one more time than they should have. And there was actually a little loop right here in the brake line, which would have greatly restricted the free flow of fluid backwards into the system when you release the brake pedal. And that would have caused the brake pads to wear out way too quick over here and grind down. If you have a stuck caliper and your brakes aren't releasing, there's really only two issues the vast majority of the time it can be. And it's going to be either a bad caliper or a bad brake hose. One simple, easy way to check it. If it's actually locked up, you can check it if it's locked up and you can't move your rotor. Don't try and do anything else except put some fluid on here. It's penetrating oil, PB blaster, maybe heat it up a little bit. Get just the exact right size 
six point socket on there and crack open this bleeder screw to let the pressure off. Don't try and pull or push or anything, just open that up and see if the pressure releases. If the pressure releases, then it's a bad hose. If you open that up and you still can't move the rotor, then it's a bad caliper. So, how about that little magic trick for the day? That will be very useful down the road if you do a lot of brake jobs and have sticky calipers. So, there you have it. The brake job for the 2010 Ford Edge. It wasn't too bad. I think the uh, ceramic brake pads were only about $34 at the local auto parts store. I think it's an auto value store up the road. And we're going to hope for the best. And if it doesn't work out, if there's still a problem, then we will replace this brake hose. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And bye for now.